We move quickly on board Gypsy, but this whole Schengen thing has got us moving quicker than usual. We're spending lots of time on board, from sun up to sundown. Quieter spots to the more lively. We're seeing what Portugal's all about, and there's no doubt that this coast is absolutely stunning. Welcome to Sailing Gypsy. Two years ago, we knew nothing about sailing, but took off from Canada with an urge for adventure. I'm Steph. This is Travis, and this is our home, Gypsy. We moved quickly and in a short time have made it down south and even crossed an ocean, but we still have a whole lot more of the world to see. Subscribe and join our life on the water. We left off last week in Porto, where we made a hop down to Aveiro and rested for the day. Winds were strong, so we stayed on board. We've got lots of ground to cover as we sail the west coast of Portugal. For three days, it was purely what we refer to as travel days, where we move for upwards of 14 hours without going ashore. By the time we drop the hook, it's sunset, and all we have time for is dinner, showering, and resting up before getting up early in the morning and moving again. This is what our three days of day hopping looks like on the map. We covered about 165 nautical miles, making stops here, here, and here. Before cabin fever sets in, we're stepping ashore and exploring more of this beautiful country. Anchors down in Kashkai, which we immediately noticed is a popular little getaway town. We always know we're in a charming little Portuguese town when we see the beautifully detailed cobblestones. This town is filled with tourists as well, both local and foreign. Traditionally a fishing village, Kashkai became a resort for the Portuguese royal family dating back to the 19th century. Nowadays, it has pretty much everything the modern tourist would look for. Beaches, restaurants, and shopping, all while surrounded by 19th century villas and architecture, making it a very enjoyable place to wander. Since we're on the clock, we've got to be selective in where we choose to stop and explore, while factoring weather to make good ground. So Kashkai was a great stop as we were also able to take a short train ride into Lisbon. This was the easiest way for us to explore the capital and the most budget friendly. It was about a 35 minute train ride from right outside the anchorage and it only cost us 10 euros in total for the both of us to get there and back. There was definitely a lot to see and do. We certainly got our steps in and wandered everywhere. That's tram number 28. It's different than the regular trams because of its vintage style, and for 3 euros, it takes you through the historical and popular tourist spots throughout the city. And as you can imagine, pastéis de nata or custard tarts are practically in every other window. So if you love them as much as I do, you can eat your heart out. Food stalls are everywhere with more baked treats, sangria, dried fruit, cured meats, and much more. After exploring Kashkai and Lisbon, we're back on the move without much land time. We're off. We're just making our way down the Portuguese coast. And I thought today was gonna to be a motor day because I thought the wind was gonna be behind us and there's gonna be, you know, around 11 knots and we just weren't gonna make any good ground at that. But apparently not. It's a beam just after the beam at like 15, 16 knots, so perfect. We're just gonna sail uh, about six hours today, five, six hours, um, not too much. And that's about it. Just Orca watching, keeping our eyes peeled. I know we're nowhere near 
the hot spots yet, quite yet, but I think after the next couple of days we will. So we're just paying attention to that. Right now they're south of where we are and they're kind of in like this triangle of Tanger, Tarifa, and Barbate, something like that. They're around Barbate and I've been monitoring the discussions that I told you guys about a couple episodes back and it seems like there are still a lot of attacks happening, like a lot of boats are getting towed into port, but if you stay within the 20 meter depth line, it seems to be okay, so that's what we're going to be doing once we get a little bit closer. I mean, we're still really close to shore now, which is nice just, you know, to fare on the side of caution, but so far it's been a great sail down the coast of Portugal here, just making all these little stops. make us some salads for lunch. It's so hot, now all we want for lunches are salads. And again, typical gypsy fashion, we decided to press onwards. Where we were gonna go was right over there. We pushed it to almost a 10 hour day and there were a lot of buoys and fish traps along the coast so we had to be extra careful in coming in at night to this small quiet fishing town. The next stop is very much the opposite, much busier. On our port side is Portimao, one of the larger cities in the Algarve region, lively and full of nightlife. On our starboard side is Ferragudo, a smaller, quieter town. left the Portimao slash Ferragudo area bright and early. We weren't planning on leaving this early. We kind of wanted to wait until later on in the day when the winds picked up to head east because we didn't want to motor if we could sail. But we wanted to check out this really, really pretty spot that we just learned about. And it's only five nautical miles east of us. So we figured we'd pick up Anchor and Go because it's a spot that you have to go really early, like before 9 a.m., before all the tour boats get there, before the wind and the chop picks up, because if you can get into this anchorage and drop the hook in the best conditions, you can get this amazing shot of your boat through this really scenic cave, which is what we're trying to do. So I hope that we did leave early enough. But yeah, it kind of sucks because we feel like we've missed a lot of this coastline just seeing some of the scenic stuff because we've been having really long days trying to cover as much distance as we can within the 90 days that we have to go from, you know, top of Spain to into the Med as far as we can go. And this coastline on the south coast, I think it's called the Argarve, Algarve area. 
it's super pretty. It's like really rugged, a lot of big cliffs and rocks and stuff. And yeah, it's just super pretty. Oh, like, look at this. Although it wasn't very far, our early morning motor was most enjoyable as we passed by all of the inviting beachfronts that line the Algarve coast. And look at that, the only boat anchored right here. So we got the place to ourselves, situated right where we think we want that view we mentioned. The Benegal Caves are very popular, if not the top tourist attraction along this coast. What makes it absolutely stunning is the eye at the top of the cave. Rays of sunshine beam down and light up the shallow turquoise waters of the grotto. And right here, ammo. That's the scene we were hoping for. Boat tours will get you here from nearby cities, or if you're able to get yourself to Benegal Beach, there are kayaks to rent, or you can swim right in. There's a lot to explore along this coast, but for us, our time was limited as the wake and the swell started rolling in. It's time to go. Just in time. Look at all the tour boats. We're getting a straight rockin'. We're lucky you got the motor up here with all that swell and wake. Yes. I was actually kind of nervous because that boat was ripping around the bend and you were trying to heave ho this thing. So I guess you can rent your kayaks in there. And it's just a constant rotation of in and out. In and out. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Next week, we're navigating through the Orca hotspots, making our way to Gibraltar. Keeping a sharp eye on the water isn't the only thing we've got to concern ourselves with out on this tricky part of the coast. See you next Friday.